Hello. In this video, we are going to run through a basic, simplified derivation of the deal inversion operator, in this case specifically for physics, and more specifically, a general flat space-time. So we'll begin by considering a general position four vector. This is going to be signified by something called x mu. In this case, we're using a superscript instead of a subscript. This is not an exponent. Do not get that confused. This mu generates numbers 0, 1, 2, and 3. And as we run over 0, 1, 2, and 3, what we're actually running over is time and space coordinates. In this case, t, x, y, and z, respectively. And we can write this out as in more of a standard vector notation. So here we are. We have the speed of light multiplied by time and then the spatial coordinates. That's obviously just a basic space-time vector. So our state space is a vacuum with an energy h. This h is called the Hamiltonian. It is a complementary function to something called a Lagrangian. And in this case, this is the sum of kinetic and potential energies, as opposed to that Lagrangian aforementioned, the difference of potential and kinetic energy. So assuming our vacuum has no energy, this Hamiltonian is equal itself to zero. There's no energy. And so by proxy, the conservation of energy, and by the fact that the derivative of a constant is also zero, since, well, a constant has no slope, since it doesn't change, we know by proxy that the derivative of the Hamiltonian in respect to time is also zero. And that gives us the conservation of energy result in the form of a derivative operator acting on our total energy, the Hamiltonian. With that being said, let's move on, but certainly keep this simplified equation in mind. So we have a means in which we can define a formal derivative now in terms of this space-time position four vector that we just generated. And we're going to use different notation here to kind of make our derivatives look a little bit better. And so, for example, del sub t or partial sub t is just saying the derivative in respect of time. In this case, that one's divided by a factor of the speed of light in order to make sure our units are correct. And so that's just basically a uh, taking, this is a derivative that takes a vector and maps it to the same vector space on, on the reals, if that makes sense. So we may also consider a generalized metric tensor, G. Not G mu nu, that's not the metric tensor. That is the metric tensor components. We are looking at a generalized metric tensor, G. And so by having this, we can isolate it to a specific flat space-time, yielding something called the Minkowski metric tensor, given by something called eta, which is Greek. And so we can write that in component form to see what's going on under the hood. So what we see here, eta mu nu, is equal to this very nearly, it's almost identical to the identity matrix. And that's interesting because, well, it's a flat space time, you would expect the Pythagorean theorem to result in its full form, but we have this negative one sitting here, and that has to do with the time and the speed of light and making sure our space time units are correct for relativistic measurements. These are not Newtonian measurements. You're not using a metric tensor to do Newtonian mechanics, at least not in any way that I would find uh, relevant. Our prior result yields a unique topological vector space, and this is the Minkowski metric space. Now this vector space is composed of a very specific type of algebra. Um, what inherent inside of this is the Clifford algebra, which generate Lie algebras, rotations in the Poincaré group, in this case the classical rotations. The space-time is an ideal, continuous, and flat 40 manifold for which we can perform these transformations. And by spanning both mu and nu indices of the metric, saying that eta has mu and nu, we can't just use a derivative in respect to mu, but also a derivative in respect to nu. We can apply both of these derivatives to that initial Hamiltonian, which was no energy, so it'll still equal zero, and then apply that to everything else we have derived thus far in this flat space-time in order to yield what I consider to be a beautiful equation. 
Are we ready? Here is our equation. The sum of over mu and u ranging from 0 to 3 of eta mu nu times the derivative in respect to x mu times the derivative in respect to x nu acting on our Hamiltonian equals 0. This little underlined part here, or really I guess you could say the larger underlined part here, is the DL inversion. It's just not written as an operator. Let's go ahead and start looking at the structure of this equation to really see what's going on. We can do this by writing our derivatives more compactly and going back to the Einstein notation where we don't have to use the sigma notation. And it looks so much more beautiful this way. This looks something more along the lines of an equation you would see in something like, you know, general relativity or perhaps quantum field theory. And it's a beautiful equation that doesn't rely on this sigma notation because in the Einstein summation convention, it's assumed when you see mu and u paired together with other elements that use those same indices that you're summing over however many, um, you're summing over the dimensionality of the space you're working in. In this case, a 4D space time, so 0, 1, 2, and 3. It is hopefully clear from this structure that we're looking at nothing more than the conservation of energy itself. And in fact, when we look at just the x-axis, and we look at the action and behavior of things on just the x-axis, this DL inversion looks nothing more than just, well, a standard derivative, just like the one we saw at the beginning. And in fact, both of them equal zero. This gives you more specifically all the details of the change of energy over a flat space-time. That's the only difference here. And so now we're ready to fully simplify the DL inversion operator and bring it out as a operator. So here's our original equation. We want to go ahead and use the Einstein summation convention to get rid of that sigma notation as before. And then we can also simplify those derivatives a bit. Now, naturally, what's our next step? Well, we can use a property of tensors, in this case, the metric tensor, to rewrite the indices of this del mu bit and del nu. Now we have del upper mu, del lower mu, times the Hamiltonian equals zero. This turns into a single operator, del squared in this case. This is the notation more commonly used in quantum field theory, where we use flat space times a lot because, well, let's be real, most people are not doing their quantum field theory calculations in path integrals over curved space times. So here is that special equation written out in a more common form than what you'll see at the very above. But an even more common form is perhaps what's called the box operator. And it'll be written like this. Nine times out of ten when you see this equation, that is how you're going to see it written, if not like the form written above. So, that's all for today. Thank you for watching this video.